Man, I love Legos. I know, right? It's the perfect way to waste 24 hours and 7 days a week. Think about all the things you can do with Legos. You can build houses. Yeah. You can build statues. Yeah. You can even make them an integral part of a video game. Yeah. With licensed DC characters. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, you're a genius! Uh, quick, give me all the Legos you have right now! But I wanted to play with them. Let's make the magic happen! All right, here goes. I knew I was onto something. Remind me to share 50% of the profits. The LEGO video game series is one of the most recognizable franchises in gaming. There's LEGO Harry Potter, LEGO Indiana Jones, and of course, LEGO Batman. Each of these games put a unique spin on existing IPs, and LEGO Batman the video game is no different. With such a large following, it was only a matter of time before speedrunners would tear the game apart. The hero story has undergone countless different developments during its legacy. The strategies that have been found for the speedrun are nothing short of remarkable. But we're not here to talk about the heroes of the story. We're here to see how the villains turn the story on its head. The villain story mode features 12 different villains in the Batman universe. Whether they're breaking into banks or creating a machine of absolute destruction, speedrunners have figured out how to commit felonies as fast as possible. From its humble beginnings to its despicable journey, this is how the speedrun community was able to completely transform the game. This is the story of LEGO Batman's villain mode. The base game of LEGO Batman is made up of six total episodes, each containing five levels. The first three episodes feature Batman and Robin as the main protagonists fighting against evil. However, we're not interested in saving Gotham. Quite the opposite, in fact. Here is where the last three episodes come into play. These are the villain episodes, and all of these pesky villains are here to stop Batman. But when did the thought of beating the villain episodes as fast as possible come to fruition? On the 11th of June 2016, a runner by the name Rosawi Komard would submit the very first LEGO Batman villain run to speedrun.com. He submitted the first time in the category with a 1 hour and 38 minute time. Alas, it can only be speculated what was featured in the run, as all of Komard's runs have been made private. Either way, Komard was one of the earliest LEGO Batman speedrunners and they helped set the bar for the future of the villain story. And lo and behold, a year later, a new superhero, or rather supervillain, would enter the LEGO Batman speedrunning scene. Princeton had already established himself as a part of the LEGO speedrunning community. He started his journey the year prior when he began running and setting records in LEGO Star Wars 2. In September of 2017, Prince shifted his focus toward LEGO Batman's villain mode. It wasn't too long before he had beaten Komar's time. Prince played the entirety of the game as intended, with the exception of a few small skips here and there. He finished the run with a 1 hour, 28 minute, and 20 second time. But wait, why does the time displayed at the end not match the time displayed on speedrun.com? That's because these records were retimed with different timing rules, which stops timing at the beginning of the final cutscene rather than on finished story after the last level. Hence why the time on Prince live split is longer than the official time displayed on speedrun.com. When it comes to the run itself, there weren't really any skips used at all. Prince was just completing each puzzle as fast as possible. A month later, Prince improved his time by close to two and a half minutes. Five days later, he started an all-episodes run of the game, which included all of the hero episodes and villain episodes. During this run, Prince managed to claim three world records in one run. He got the all-episodes world record, the hero story record, and of course, the villain story record. Prince was on top of it all, and this would be his last world record for the villain story in 2017. In the meantime, he returned to running Hero Story, and the villain category was laid to rest for the time being. An important aspect of the LEGO games is that you always have two playable characters no matter what level you're playing. 
You can either switch back and forth between both characters, or connect a second player to control both at the same time. This can make for some pretty memorable moments with a friend, and it's a ton of fun. But what if you had no friends? What if it was possible for one person to exploit the usage of two player? What if you could create new skips by controlling both characters at the same time? That idea was completely disallowed. In the early days of LEGO speedruns, there was a long debate about whether two controllers should be allowed for solo speedruns. Some people thought it wouldn't be fair, while others thought that the restriction should be lifted. Eventually, in March of 2018, it was decided that using two controllers would be fair game. This decision changed the speedrunning landscape for the LEGO series, including LEGO Batman. Whether you're using just your hands, or if you're using your hands and feet to control both players, this is the era of one player two controllers, better known as 1P2C. Hey, I got another controller for us to use. Oh hey! Oh don't worry, I already got us a second controller. Oh, you want it? Controlling two different players at the same time is about as difficult as it sounds. It was going to take a lot of time before runners could navigate 1P2C with confidence. At this point, how much time could feasibly be saved using this strategy? Well, in May of 2018, Prince would answer that question. In 4-1, Prince used Clayface's double jump to clear the gate at the beginning. Under normal circumstances, this makes it impossible to progress because both characters need to press the buttons in the elevator to continue. But Prince discovered that by dropping in second player, Riddler will warp into the parking lot without opening the gate. This saved 10 seconds early in the run. In the following level, 4-2, rather than using Riddler to open the sewer door, you can jump over the door and go through the wall to hit the loading zone for the final room. A similar trick was found in 4-3 to skip building the elevator. For episode 5, it was discovered that by timing your A presses rhythmically during Penguin's gliding animation, you can maintain airtime for a much longer period than intended. This made 5-1 a breeze since Prince could simply glide over the rivers. The next use of 1P2C in the run was during 5-2. Two. Midway through the level, Penguin is supposed to use the fans on the ground to deflect the bombs sent by the helicopter, which takes about a minute to complete. However, luckily for speedrunners, the fan can actually allow for the fight to be skipped. By using the fan, Prince can first get Penguin on the other side of the fence past the boss area, and then drop in player 2 as Catwoman to jump around the fence. On top of this new trick, another skip allowed Catwoman to jump around the crates in the museum, erasing the need to unlock the dinosaur exhibit. All in all, a little over a minute was shaved off in this level alone. Oh, we still have yet to look at episode 6, which features none other but the Joker. In 6-1, Joker teams with Harley, who herself has a broken double jump. Using her ability, Prince skips the slow process of getting Harley through the ferris wheel, and instead uses her double jump on this trash can to get on the walkway above. A plethora of small time saves have been found in the last few levels of the run, which all helped push the time down much lower. Prince's previous world record in October was 1 hour and 24 minutes long. And now, 7 months later, Prince had achieved a time of 1 hour and 10 minutes. A 13 and a half minute time cut had just been completed. This was an incredible accomplishment, and this was just the beginning. Prince was getting ready to decimate the category. On that very same day, he started up another run, determined to show what he was truly capable of. going to be a 107 time.
By the beginning of 2019, the record had been lowered to a staggering 1 hour and 4 minute time. A lot of these villain records were accomplished during larger runs. This would include the All Episodes run, as well as the category Hush Percent, where the player has to free all of the hostages throughout the game. While movement had definitely been refined, a lot of time save had come from two new key discoveries, the first of which took place at the beginning of the run. After exiting the parking lot in 4-1, Clayface and Riddler are supposed to break into an air vent using a vehicle. Instead of going through all of that trouble, a player named Hot Rod Zod discovered that if Clayface is aligned in this window correctly, he can jump into the wall and get over the gate. Utilizing Clayface's wall jump, he can climb between these two walls until he gets above the collision barrier. Once he's inside the wall, he must jump off of the metal structure to get to the ventilation shaft. If all goes well, Clayface and Riddler will warp to the final room of the level, saving over a full minute. Another big skip was executed in 5-1. Prince had always taken the high path to get across the river and the puddle of poison, but it was discovered that this roof just before the poison had buggy collision, thus making it possible to warp on top of the structure and glide over the poison puddle. Huddle. While 1P2C was still sparsely used, mainly only serving to help build contraptions faster, it was slowly becoming more and more important throughout the run. All in all, this helped Prince end 2018 with a banger of a world record. By the time February 2019 came around, the villain speedrun for LEGO Batman didn't see too much activity in terms of world record competition. But just because there were no new records didn't mean new time saves weren't being found. In 4-4, there's a hallway in the third area that's blocked off by four sets of lasers. The only thing that can withstand them is this robot that has to be built by the player, which takes some time. The area takes about 30 seconds to complete, or at least it did, until a workaround was found. Using two-player in LEGO Batman can break the game in very bizarre ways. For some strange reason by dropping in another controller, this is what happens when player two runs through the lasers. Sorry, what just happened? When player 2 makes contact with the laser beams, all of the damage they take is transferred to player 1. This essentially makes player 2 invincible while player 1 takes all of their damage. This room's completion went from 30 seconds to just about 5 seconds. The only thing that could make this crazier is if another skip was found in the same level that also involved lasers. There's another skip that involves lasers. In the following area, Riddler and Harvey are supposed to work together to destroy the generators, which requires a vehicle to push a bunch of buttons and, well, it's pretty slow. Thankfully, the vehicle you're supposed to use for the puzzle can actually be used to damage hop over the laser wall. Since the door itself has no collision, the player can waltz right into the final room. Aside from 4-4 seeing a massive amount of improvement, there were some other notable skips found in the other episodes. One of the highlights was a new discovery made in 6-4. Four. Thanks once again to Buggy Collision, this handrail can be grabbed from the other side of the fence, allowing Moth to glide over the fire blocking the road. After he gets to the other side, Moth has to get on top of these trees and knock over the statue so they can open the gate, and just kidding, you can walk through this wall and get to the last area. These new additions to the run were going to be very handy. On February 15th, 2019, Prince would start up an all-episode speedrun of LEGO Batman. He found himself on quite a good good pace, and remarkably, he achieved a new world record for hero mode. But his actual run wasn't finished yet, because he still had yet to complete the villain episodes. After a rocky start in 4-1, Prince managed to get his fastest completion of 4-3 ever. He did the robot skip and laser skip, ending episode 4 strong. Prince glided over the rivers in 5-1 gracefully, and skipped the lasers in 5-2. Before he knew it, it was time to enter the final episode of the run. 6-1 and 2 were executed well, but when 6-3 came along, Prince struggled to nail some of the platforming at the beginning. When he got past the sketchy bridge, Prince jumped over the fire with ease. Just as he tried to drive away on the bike, he got shot off by an NPC. He tried to get on another bike, but the NPCs were overwhelming him. It seemed like he was stuck, almost powerless.
Finally, Prince was able to reclaim the bike and drive through the gate. By the time he entered the final level, he was 4 minutes ahead of his all episodes time and a minute and a half ahead of his villain record. Throughout Prince's domination of LEGO Batman, he had set two different all-episode times that each broke the record in both the villain story and hero story at the same time. On this run, he was on pace to do it again. And Prince wasn't going to let up on the gas. He was going to go as fast as possible no matter what. He is coming over here, which doesn't always happen. Two difficult jumps here. One, got it. I gotta do that same thing on the other side now. Three, two, one. Prince had simultaneously achieved the record in the three categories for the third time. He had achieved one of the most influential speedruns in LEGO Batman history. After this run, Prince took a well-deserved indefinite break from running the villain's story, and this was the last record he ever set in the category. It had been six months since Prince had last set his world record. The closest runner to his villain time was still seven minutes behind. It was going to take a lot of effort to beat Prince. The thought of a sub hour could be feasible, but nearly impossible at this point. At least, that's what most people thought. Then, out of nowhere, a new runner had emerged and completely changed the speedrun forever. They did something no one could have dreamed of. Not even Prince could have possibly predicted that this was going to happen. Now, what could have occurred to give the community such a strong reaction? How in the heck did this happen? An 8 minute time jump between world records? There had to have been a ton of new discoveries made in this run, right? This is likely the case, but there is no way to know for sure as the run has been lost to time. Those who were around in 2019 remember Waylon's sheer talent and domination of the LEGO Batman leaderboards. They carried the category across the sub hour line, and then some. Unsurprisingly, nobody was very eager to try and take down this monstrous record, and Waylon's time would make itself comfortable at the top. As the turn of the decade came around, little had changed in the villain story mode of the game. Waylon was still far ahead of any other runner, still remaining as the only person with a sub hour. The record was undisturbed. At least, that's what it seemed like on the surface, but looking at the bigger picture, a new runner was slowly climbing up the ranks. This is Guildmaster. He began running LEGO Batman in the beginning of April and quickly started improving his times. A month later, he even started making speedrun tutorials for anybody who was interested in the game. By the beginning of June, Guild had started focusing on the villain run. On the 13th of June, he would become the third person to get a sub hour time in the category. Unfortunately for Guild, another player by the name Senor swooped in and snatched the second ever sub hour time the day prior. But that was okay since Guild managed to get a faster time by 3 minutes. Surely this Senor wouldn't become relevant later. Guildmaster continued doing runs into the month of July, and it all culminated on July 9th, when he finally pulled ahead of Waylon. He decided to do the episodes out of order this time, choosing to do episode 5 last. This was largely because episode 6 is considered the hardest, so completing those levels first gets the hardest parts of the run out of the way. Guild's time was now officially 9 minutes ahead of the last record with video proof. How did the time go down this far? Well, he didn't do it alone. At the end of 4-1, Los discovered that by getting Clayface to load in this NPC, Riddler can mind control him from the ground rather than needing to get on the roof himself. This was much more efficient and saved about 10 to 15 seconds in Guild's run. 4-2 was also massively improved due to two new skips, first the river skip, and then the pillar skip in the following room. 
not to mention that 1P2C was being used a lot more throughout the run. More drop-in warps were discovered by Los in multiple different levels, each saving between 10 seconds to more than a minute. Los was quickly becoming the backbone of the LEGO Batman speedrunning community, and these weren't even the biggest discoveries he found. In 6-1, the last portion of the level ends with a boss fight against Gordon and the police force. Depending on RNG, random number generator, also well known as luck, the length of the fight can vary. Luckily, Los had found a way to speed up the last part of the level, by skipping the boss fight entirely. Just before the boss area is a pool filled with ducks. Next to this pool, Los found out that Harley can wall jump back and forth in this corner. If she gets high enough, she can jump over the invisible wall and get out of bounds. From here, the player has to walk around the boss area as the camera continues to stay stationary. Eventually, if Harley gets into the right spot, the camera will shift back to her. Now, why is this supposedly faster? Because the trigger to end the level is located out of bounds near this gate, and if the player hits it, the level instantly ends. Just like that, another minute had been saved. 5-2 also saw a huge new development. When entering the museum, Catwoman and Penguin are shown falling from the top of the building. By using the formerly mentioned gliding trick, Penguin can reach the second floor early and skip nearly the entire segment. To end off the run, Los discovered an out of bounds clip in 5-4 and 5-5 as well. Yeah, a lot of tricks had been found which made the quest to get a sub hour time a breeze. Though Guild's time was impressive, he knew that his top position was not going to last long. In his description, Guild wrote down this statement. I give this one day before Waylon gets a 50 OX. His competition wasn't far away, and he was preparing for the worst case scenario. Luckily for him, Waylon wouldn't achieve a 50 minute time. Unluckily for him, Waylon would achieve a time under 50 minutes. A 48.57. The category could clearly go down much further, and Guild knew this. He wasn't going to let Wayland stay on top of the leaderboard as long as he was around. This, in turn, began the rivalry between Guildmaster and Wayland. The two were both capable of lowering their personal bests, but the question was who was going to do it first? More importantly, who was going to get the faster time? The battle was on. Just before Halloween day, Guild took his time down below the 47 minute mark. A lot of the time saved was in large part due to better movement throughout the run, but there were other discoveries too. There was one method in particular that was discovered to mess with the game's physics in a completely different way. That method was the vertical sync option in the video settings. Vertical sync, or V-Sync for short, is a crucial part of the game's physics engine. V-Sync is usually kept on during a speedrun so that the game will run at a consistent 60 FPS frames per second during the run. When turned off, the game tries to run at the highest frame rate possible, which can cause many glitches to occur. When turned on and off in the right places, however, However, it can be proven useful in the speedrun. One of the biggest skips found improved upon the vehicle skip in 4-4. If the player stays toward the bottom of the screen in this big room, a runner named The Gluth figured out that lasers don't spawn. At least, sometimes. However, if player 2 walks into the room as well, the lasers will be triggered. By getting player 2 stuck in this area and turning off V-Sync, they have a much lower chance of entering the big room, thus making the lasers stay deactivated. This was one of the most RNG-reliant tricks in the run, but it does save 20 seconds over the vehicle skip if done successfully. Another good example of V-Sync being used is in the final room of 6-3. Scarecrow is supposed to open the garage door at the end to hit the trigger for the end of the level. 
Interestingly enough, there's a vehicle located on the outside of the door that's placed inside of the unlevel trigger. Since the vehicle is so close to the garage door, a player named Vinny Boy discovered that you can hop into the vehicle from the other side. Guild used V-Sync to make the trick more consistent and saved about 12 seconds. V-Sync was used in a similar way in 4-5 as well, and the two skips combined saved over 30 seconds. Guild was certain that the time could go down lower, but for now, he was satisfied. He knew that his run could definitely be improved, but he felt comfortable taking a quick break from running the category. Two weeks later, Guild still had the world record... Wait a second, he's not in first anymore. Well, Waylon must have beat him then. Wait, his time is still below Guild's? Who could have taken the top spot? Sinor had risen up the ranks and taken first place on the leaderboard, though it was quite close. He only beat Guildmaster by 2 seconds, but that didn't mean there weren't new strategies introduced. In 5-2, Sinor only used Catwoman for the roof segment of the level. That's right, Sinor was able to use Catwoman's double jump ability to skip a majority of the puzzles. Another skip was discovered in 5-4 by Note KO that helped get Croc up to the sewer cap faster by doing some drop-in shenanigans. The warp in the last level gave him some trouble, but Sinor still managed to get his first record in the category. He was a bit upset because he knew there was still a long way to go. Guild would prove that to be true when he reclaimed the record just 9 days later. He didn't go for the Catwoman only strat in 5-2, which lost him some time. Whatever time he did lose though, he made up for in the final level. A few days before, Los found a consistent way to hit the end level trigger in 5-5, skipping the entire finale sequence. A whopping minute had been cut off, and Guild used it to get a 45 minute and 10 second time. Guild left the record at that, and shifted his focus toward the all episodes run. After he set the record for that category, Guildmaster would step back from world record competition for good. He was proud of his legacy, and decided to let others have the chance at making LEGO Batman history. Just before the turn of the 2021 New Year, someone new would get the villain world record. Note KO wasn't just a glitch hunter, but a world record contender as well. He improved on the record by exactly a minute on the 31st of December. This run was unique because there were no new strategies to be seen. Note's time was merely the best simply because he played really well. He showed that there was still a lot of optimization to be done for the game. This applied to finding new discoveries, but this was also relevant when it came to movement. The community knew there was still a long way to go. There was quite a long wait for the next world record in the villain's story. For over 6 months, the run remained unchanged. The category dried up of competition, and it needed somebody to spice it up. But just because there wasn't any world record action didn't mean that new developments weren't happening. One day, previous world record holder Sinor was messing around in the first level of the game. He was fooling around with some of the game's controls just to see if anything would occur. All seemed normal, until he discovered something groundbreaking. He immediately informed the community about his new discovery, and on July 16th, 2021, he would use his discovery in the next villain record. Needless to say, a wait for a world record was worth it because a new method for breaking the game was found. Welcome to the world of Alt-Tab and Control-Alt-Delete. Oh boy, a new strategy! No way. How does it work? All we need to do is use the Alt-Tab keys in our keyboard to get the strat to work! Fixed it. When holding down Alt and pressing the tab keys on the keyboard, any application you have opened on your computer will be put in the background. If you do this while playing LEGO Batman, the game is frozen and put in the background and the player must press Alt Tab to bring the game up again. When this happens, the game's frame rate buffers for a second before snapping back to normal, replicating a similar effect as V-Sync. 
However, for some runners, Alt-Tab was not viable because it would crash the game after consistent use, hence the introduction of Control-Alt-Delete. It had similar in-game effects as Alt-Tab, and it had a much lower chance of crashing, which is why some runners used this method instead. The excitement doesn't end there, because runners quickly found a way to use this trick to clip through walls. For example, in Sinor's new world record in 6-4, he gets himself stuck between the bomb and the wall and uses Alt-Tab to clip to the other side, saving about 8 seconds. This wasn't the only time it was used, either. Instead of going around the final room and hitting the levers in 5-2, Sinor saved 30 seconds by using Control alt delete to clip the bomb through the glass wall. Add in some more drop-in warps, and Sinor crushed the world record. It was no surprise that the discovery of Alt-Tab and Control alt delete would motivate runners to hunt for new skips. Among those players was NoteKO, who continued to make more discoveries. In 6-1, Note found a way to clip through this wall and skip the tedious puzzle. He also found a more efficient boat route in 5-3, saving a good few seconds. Like we've seen before, Note's interests have also involved trying to get the world record. Not long after Sinor got his 42-16, Note began running the category once again. With so much optimization yet to be done, he knew there was still a lot of room for the time to go down. And he went on quite the world record streak. Five minutes. That's how far the record went down since Sinor's last record. Note was becoming one of the greatest LEGO Batman runners ever. He didn't quit even after he had achieved the first sub-40. He continued to lower the record into January 2022 until he set his record of 3710. This time showed off Alt-Tabs and Control alt deletes potential more than any other run up to that point, while featuring other new skips as well. In 4-2, Riddler is supposed to mind control this NPC to activate the stairs in this area. Los would soon figure out that would not be necessary anymore. By jumping off of the turnstile and switching characters at just the right time, Mr. Freeze will jump again in midair and grab onto the rails above. A faster AI manipulation strategy was found in 4-3 by Lava Fang to speed up the beginning of the level by doing some nifty platforming. Speaking of AI manipulation, a huge time save was found in 4-5 as well. The beginning is supposed to involve a bunch of antics which ends with Riddler taking over the helicopter to shoot down the front door of the building. The skip that was found here was fittingly named Pilot's Day Off. By keeping Harvey in this corner for just a second, the game marks that spot as Harvey's spawn point. If Harvey continuously jumps in the right spots until he gets to the other side, the game still believes he should be in that corner. Once the player gets him stuck in this statue, the player will switch back to Riddler. Because the game still thinks Harvey isn't supposed to be here, the AI will leap all the way from the statue to the corner. By switching back to Harvey as he clips inside of the door, the loading zone is triggered and they get inside early early, saving 45 seconds. These skips were big, and that's not even including the Alt-Tab and Control-Alt-Delete clips. In Note's run, using Control-Alt-Delete, he clipped into the second area early in 4-2, skipped the two-player puzzle in 6-1, and clipped out of bounds in 6-4. These new skips combined saved over a minute in the run. And of course, who could have found these insane skips other than Los himself? 
The amount of discoveries he found was remarkable, and it was all for the greater good of the community. With the assistance of him and many other glitch hunters, Note was able to get a 37 minute and 10 second time. With it being just the start of the year, surely a lot more was to come for the villain story. But after Note's world records, nothing. The run remained unchanged for a prolonged period of time. So much had just happened, and then, almost just as quickly, nothing happened. The only person that could possibly lower the time at this point was Note. With him out of the picture, the category entered a deep sleep for a long time. May 2nd, 2023. Sinor had just set a new record in the free play mode in the hero story. By this point, a new timing method was implemented that eliminated load times during the run to prevent faster PCs from having an advantage over the competition. After Sinor was celebrated for his new record, he gazed upon the villain story for the first time in nearly two years. In the last year, many improvements had been made to the run, some of which were found by Sinor himself. New lag clips using alt tab and control alt delete were found, and improvements on existing tricks had been brought to light. A lot had occurred in the glitch hunting scene, and yet, very little happened in the speedrunning scene. When he booted up the game and pulled up his timer, Sinor knew it was time to change things. He was going to return and bring life back into the villain story. I'm gonna play Risky here. I'm gonna try the new setup I found today for the board in the next room. No, it's not working. Oh, no. <sighs> nice. <laughs> oh, dude. That was so dumb. Sinor, in a way, had turned into the hero the speedrun was looking for. He took the time down when no one else could. Of course, he didn't do it alone. He had many friends before him who had the record, made discoveries, and pushed the run forward. With all of their help, Sinor was able to claim the record once again and save the category. But lurking in the shadows, someone else had become interested in the villain story. The Hamster hadn't held the record before, at least not in this category. The hero story was his main focus, but this time, he was going to switch sides and take down Sinor's world record. He tried to get it back in September, but fell just a little short. He knew that with enough determination, he could get the fastest time. On the 28th of December, Hamster began a run on a decent pace. He implemented a new trick in 4-4 that would clip Riddler into the end of the level early. It was a hard trick, so he ended up losing time overall. But he knew Sinor's run wasn't perfect. Sinor had a rough 6-3, and he continuously lost time until the end when he had the fastest 5-4 of his life. But would that be enough to keep Hamster from taking his record? Hamster entered 6-3, and… everything went 
perfectly. Hamster had just completed one of the fastest runs of the level in history, and now he was far ahead. He lost a little of his lead later, until he executed one of the cleanest 5-2 completions ever. He lost a handful of time in the last few levels, but that didn't stop him. Hamster had claimed the world record and taken the top spot. Sinor and Hamster are both incredible players, and they each have a chance of lowering the time again. But in the meantime, Sinor's record has been stolen from him. It's going to take skill, patience, and determination if he wants to be at the top once again. However, Hamster could retaliate at any point and beat Sinor to the punch. Ultimately, time will decide if either of these runners will keep the record, or if someone new will take the top spot. No matter what, everyone will work together to get the fastest time possible. The future of this game is going to be chaotic, it's going to be hard, but it is going to be meaningful. This may only just be a new beginning for the LEGO speedrunning community.